Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Tuem, and today we are going to talk with Andromeda Godfrey, and you probably know her from the movie O Ramona, which was released uh, on Netflix. Yes, there she is. Let me bring her up. I send the request. Oh, you declined by mistake. Let me send the request again. Yeah, we are connecting. Hey, Hello. Antamida. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Sorry, that was a little bit of a mix up. This is the first time I've done this, so I'm a little bit nervous and oh, oh what's that, going on? <laughs> that's no, absolutely no problem. Usually first timers for live on Instagram, this is usual. It happens yeah, a lot. Okay. So how is the weather in your city now? It's lovely. It's been really hot and now it's cooled down a little bit. I live in Brighton, which is right on the coast of the UK. Um, and right now it's nice and not too hot. Not too hot. It's nice. Yeah. Oh, How about you? I am with you because uh, here in Cyprus it's too hot oh. and it's humid at the same time. Plus uh, 38 degrees. So it's a uh, oh, hell here. Gosh. No. <laughs> We got about as high as about 34 down here and we were sweltering. Oh, I see. It kind of stops you. You can't really do very much when it gets that hot. Well, I can't. Yeah, actually, we got used to it after so many years. Yeah. I was born and raised in Iran, but it's been about uh, 11 years that I've been living in Cyprus. So yeah. I pretty much got used to the weather here. And where are you from? Where, uh, where originally before Cyprus? Yes, uh, I'm, I was born and raised in Tehran, capital of Iran. Oh, okay. yeah. And then I moved in Cyprus. Oh, okay. And I, okay. between yeah. that, for a year, I went living in Russia. Oh, wow. Yeah. But I didn't have this chance to uh, visit UK so far. I am very interested oh. to visit there as well. Yeah, I like living here. It's a good place. But uh, you also been uh, born in UK, but you've been raised in uh, USA, right? That's right. Yep. So I was I was born here in the UK. Then when I was seven years old, I moved with my mother, who's from Hawaii, to Hawaii. So I grew up in Hawaii. Oh, very interesting. Yeah. So you are you know how it is to live in an island? I do. I know <laughs> island life. I love island life. I I love being by the sea. I um, and Hawaii was a great place to grow up. Such a nice place. Yeah, that's wonderful. And uh, Andromeda, would you please tell us about your uh, job and what do you do these days? Uh, I'm an actress and I also am a producer. So I act um, in mainly other people's things and I produce my own stuff. Well, produce other people's stuff, but I'm a producer as well. Oh, that's um, very nice. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's, it's two completely different jobs. So being an actress, it's almost like you feel it's, all the attention's on you and you get very taken care of. And it's just like, it's, I'm not gonna say it's easy because it's not because you have to create character and you have to, you know, you have to be very prepared, but there's something very relaxing about it. But on the other side is the producer and the producer you have to be on and you have to be organized and um, aware of everything and putting out fires. And it's a completely different skill set. but I like it because I, I think that I have both skill sets. Is it true that uh, producers are the most powerful uh, people inside the movie industry? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> because everyone producers... wants to be a producer at the end. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe people don't realize how much work goes into being a producer. It is a, it's a laborious job. You're there from the very beginning of a script idea to the very end of shooting the film. And then it goes on beyond. So you're, it's years and years and years for one project. You'll still be working on the project even after it's, it's, it's given birth, you know, so yeah. And is it true that most of the people know you from O Ramona movie? I think O Ramona was definitely, it's been my biggest role to date. Um, and um, when, when we shot the film, I don't think we, we didn't really realize that it would be sold to Netflix. I mean, I, I assumed the producers were hoping it would be sold to Netflix. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, definitely my biggest, juiciest role. So that's exciting. Um, it, 
it was the role that I got to really sink my teeth into as an actress. I mean, I've done big, big roles in, in theater and, you know, I've done a lot of short films and then I've done small parts in feature films. But Oh Ramona was a part where I really got to immerse myself in this character and she was a lot of fun to play. I don't know if you've, if you've seen the film, um, Alfred. Yeah, that's yeah. actually how I got introduced to you. I was uh, very cool. thrilled to talk with you because you were uh, totally shining in that movie. Oh, thank you so much. Although it was a teenage movie, but <laughs> you yes. were shining the most. That was the most interesting thing. Oh, that. <laughs> oh that's so lovely. Just so what do you me. think about the character of Alfred in this movie? How is it uh, common, have things common with you or how is she different from? Yeah, you? okay. Well, it's interesting because, oh, yeah, I think I went dark for a second there. Um, it's interesting because, you know, I'm a mother, I've got three children. So it, from, from that point of view, there's a similarity. Um, but she's much more, I think in some ways she's maybe wilder than I am. And she's deaf. I mean, I do swear, but um, she swears a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, yes. And she is, um, she's very very much focused on her son you know her son she's called alfred you know the reason why she's called alfred she's called alfred because she is a nickname from her son who um, named her alfred after the character in the batman franchise alfred so alfred is kind of like the butler he's the one who does everything so uh, my character alfred is very much devoted to her son and does everything for him. My, uh, her life revolved around Andre, um, which is not exactly how, does it keep on going black for you? Do I keep on disappearing? No, no, it's okay. It's totally yeah? okay from here. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so I, um, in that respect, maybe things are a little bit different because I don't focus all of my attention on my children all the time. Um, I'm hoping I'm raising independent children um, who don't need their mommy all the time. Um, I don't know, you'd have to ask them. <laughs> but did you have uh, this thing in common that you were a single mom for a period of time? Yes, yes, yes. So I've been a single mom for about eight years now. And then before that, I was a single mom as well, before my, um, I met my, um, my second part, uh, long-term partner, my husband, my ex-husband now. Um, so, but you have daughters, not a son, right? I've got three children. I've got a non-binary is my eldest. And then I've got a son and a daughter. My youngest is a daughter. Oh, okay. So you already had the experience to have a son. Yes, yes, yes. And boys, yeah, my son is, he's lovely. I love him. <laughs> um, but what else? Um, so yeah, so there was the similarity in being a single mom. And you have to be, you know, as a single parent, you kind of have to have you have to do both roles. You have to be the mom and the dad, and you have to find a balance. And hopefully I've done an okay job. <laughs> yeah. And uh, for, for example, American Pie, we had this relation between Jim and his father. The interesting thing for me in this movie was that now we are seeing the relation between mom and son. Yes, exactly. And that was very interesting. Yeah, yeah. And um, working with Bogdan was amazing. He is so lovely. I mean, the second we met, it was like instant, instant kind of, um, instant infinity meeting. It was just like, okay, yeah, we can do this. You can be my son, I can be your mom. Let's do this. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what do you think about working with teenagers? How was it? Um, good. Yeah, I mean, they were all professional actors. So, I mean, it was mainly, I mainly worked with Bogdan and then um, I did work with Holly Horn for one day. But then, you know, behind the scenes, it was really fun. We, um, I got on with all of them. I, I'd see them, you know, I was out in, in Romania for, you know, weeks and weeks at a time. So you kind of just become, friends you know um so and it was yeah they were really lovely kids and we got on really well yeah but yeah. was it times that you said okay i'm tired of uh, teenage companies something like that yes and i'd go back to my hotel room <laughs> and <laughs> shut the door and have some quiet time on my own 
Yeah, mm. they can, they, I mean, they were able to, I shouldn't be saying this, but they were able to, you know, drink a few drinks and then go to work the next day. I, I can't do that. You know, I have to, I have to um, show up for work with no alcohol in me the night before, or maybe even like just a tiny little glass of wine or something. But I, I, I don't have that ability anymore. <laughs> Yes, uh, I'm a university teacher and I'm dealing with young adults and I know how they can uh, fresh you, how yeah. they can uh, make you feel also young whenever you keep their yeah. company, you talk with them. So yeah. I think this is the same experience you had uh, during the set there. It's so true. It's so true. They, their energy is very effervescent and, and excited and it's, it does rub off on you. Oh, that's great. And I wanted to also ask you about uh, Christina Jacob, because uh, she's a mystery to me. Uh, she's uh -huh. not a native uh, English speaker, but no. the way she managed everything was looking perfect to me because the direction was uh, wonderful. Yeah. And uh, if, would you please tell us about uh, Christina, how, uh, about her personality, about her yeah. uh, profession? Yes. So Christina has... Um, a I think this might have been her fourth feature. Um, her, first, her first few features were in Romanian and she wanted to reach a bigger audience. So she decided to do something in American. But I, I don't know if you know, the story is based on a, a real life, you know, based on a book that came out in Romania. Yeah, yeah. It was a bestseller um, by a comedian, uh, comedian called- Andre It was Saki Dramona instead of O Ramona, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it was, it was a different, it, yes. Yeah. Ramona, yeah, which I think didn't really go. Yeah, not me. good for yeah. TV, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so um, Christina had done those films and um, so she wanted to do an, like an American English language film. And um, she's just wonderful to work with. She's very generous. She's very open. She's very loving. She's very young, but she has this quite maternal energy about her, which I think was, which really held the cast, um, made the cast feel very comfortable. And um, she's just very sweet and generous. And I think she did a really good job. Yeah, I'd love to work with her again. Yeah, because uh, when I watched the movie, I could see maybe you said the uh, teenagers were professional actors, but still I could see some uh, amateur uh, scenes uh, about uh, their roles but the thing was about the direction the direction was something creative and yes. i was thinking okay who did it and i understood that's a female and yes. that i then i understood the flavor that we have uh, especially related to romantic scenes it yes. comes from a, only a female not a man could make such scenes yeah no i think you're right yeah i think you're right yeah i think she's i think she's very talented yeah, indeed. Yeah. And by the way, the other question I have uh, for you is related to IMDb. I know uh, you're also a member there. Mm -hmm. And IMDb has a star meter. Mm -hmm. How much is it important to you, the rank that they give you? Um, it is important, I think, in terms of, of people. Some people will say that it's not very important at all. Some people will say that it's, um, some casting directors will say that it's not important, but it's about creating a buzz. And the higher you are on the, on the, on the meter, the more buzz there is around you. Um, it's a, that's a hard question to answer, actually. Yeah, some people it is. I think it's, I think it's more fun than anything else. I think it's more of a, you know, it's just a, fun to see who's the flavor of the month you know yeah what's, what's, a fun competition between everybody yes and yes, i think yes. about 10 million people are member there in the imd oh, that right yeah oh wow that's a lot of people <laughs> yeah but how trustworthy is that because for example i've never done something official in movie industry i'm a writer but i never could uh, make my writings published mm -hmm. and uh, i never had an uh, official experience uh, as a movie industry but my ranking now is 149,000. So people are checking you out, basically. So, yeah, because they are watching the interviews. Yes. And because and of go. that, it went up. But is it yeah. fair? Because I know some talented uh, actors that are even lower than me in the star meter. So is it fair? 
Well, the thing is, is it fluctuates. It fluctuates up and down, up and down. So um, depending on what you've done recently that, uh, that people are looking at you as an actor or a writer or a director or whatever, then it will go up. But then it'll go down again. Um, so I don't think I don't think we can pay too much attention to it because it is kind of just a it's a star meter, you know. Yeah. Just the name of it is star meter. So it, I think it's fun rather than too serious. I think if you take start taking those things too seriously, um, you kind of lose grasp of why you are in the industry to begin with, which is to be a storyteller. Yeah, and we shouldn't be obsessed with them clearly. Yeah. No, that's true. But at least it gives us some idea that uh, why is that actor or actress doing these days? Is she hot yes. or not, as you say? Yeah, yeah, that's true. And yeah. uh, by the way, since uh, you have experience uh, living in UK and uh, the USA, what would you say as a cultural difference between these two countries? Do you see any significant difference? Well, you know, we're very interlinked, the UK and the US. There's, there's definitely a bond between us. Um, culturally, well, uh, you know, I don't want to get too political on here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not political, just uh, something cultural related to society. <laughs> Everything is somehow related to politics, no matter what we are doing, but especially right now. I mean, it's just a hotbed of polit politics and justice. And um, yeah, it's, it's a, I, I have to say that I some recently I've become quite obsessed with American politics. And I've been doing this deep dive into always finding out what Trump is doing. And it's really not, it's not healthy. But I kind of feel kind of obsessed about what's what he's doing for some reason. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of other people who are doing the same thing. But um, yeah, culturally, yes, there is a, a difference. I, I think that there's the, the humor is very different. You know, the British humor is, is has a life of its own. It's just so I love British humor. Um, and I think it's a lot more reserved and, but tongue in cheek and a bit more dry. Um, so I prefer British humor. Although I have been watching some, some um, American comedy that I've been thinking is quite funny. But yeah, so I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah. And uh, do you think is it easier to uh, satisfy American or British uh, audience easier? Mm. Because as you said, the, the humor is different from yeah. uh, one country yeah. to another. So did you face something like that, that it's, it's harder, for example, to satisfy my fans in Britain? Um, do you know, I feel very much more British than I do American. I may sound American, but I feel very much more British here and I feel much more comfortable here. I feel much more um, like um, I understand the British way of being much more than I understand the American way of being. Um, and I'd say that for the, uh, for the most part, my, it's, it's interesting since I made O Ramona, it's the, 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 fans that I seem to have were actually young kids. So there's a lot of young kids who came to, came to my, um, to Instagram, for example, through O Ramona. Um, but yeah, British people, who is easier to please? I, I can't answer that question, I don't know. Yeah, it's very <laughs> hard to answer because the it's vast really population hard. with different tastes also, it's very Yeah, hard exactly. There's so many different people in the world. You can't, you can't, um, please everyone with what you have. That's, that's one kind of thing that I've learned um, over the last few years is you'll never be able to please everyone, you know, with what you, with the content that you're, that you're giving, you know, the storytelling that you're doing, you won't please everyone. And there's just like this, this one thing that I learned from one of my mentors, Bonnie Gillespie, which is this, the, the thirds, the rule of thirds. So there's a third of the population who will, you, will be your fans there's a third of the population who will completely not like you at all. And there's a third of the population who will be indifferent about you. So you just want to focus on the people that actually you, you vibe with and who vibe with you. And then you yeah. don't even have to think about the other people. 
Yeah, that's true. Even if you look at the most famous actor, still that guy might have some haters. This is yeah, natural. Absolutely. Yeah. But what are your main challenges as an actor? Well, right now in our present climate, it's uh, finding work um, because there's not much work going. Um, I have been shortlisted for um, an exciting apocalyptic short film, um, which I'm going to go up to London and have a second audition for, which is very exciting. I mean, even if I, even if I don't get the part, I did a self tape for it, and it was just so much fun just to act again because it's been a long time since I acted, and even the whole self taping um, part of acting is really fun because um, you get to act. You know, it's it's uh, even going to auditions is fun because you get to act. You get to show you get to show what you what you can do. Um, so there's that. Um, what other challenges are there? But besides this pandemic thing, because it's an exceptional time now for everybody. But besides yeah. that, what would you say is the most challenging for you? Um, it's getting seen by the casting directors that I want to be seen by. Yeah, I think that's definitely the the because I really want to break into TV. I've done a lot of film, and I really want to break into TV. And I came into acting quite late, so I came into acting. Um, although I, I wanted to be an actress since I was a little kid, um, for one reason or another, I kept on putting it off, and then having children, and then putting it off again. And then about ten years ago, I decided, okay, well, it's now or never. And um, I started doing short films and I started my own production company with my business partner, Diana um, De Benedetti. And we started making short films so that I could create content for myself and she could write and we could produce together because we both love film so much. So, we, so I started creating my own stuff or we started creating stuff for me to be in. Um, and now, um, 10 years later, I've done a lot of film stuff, but I haven't done very much TV. I've done like two very, very small TV roles. And in the industry, it's really tough to get yourself into that little, in, into booking your first TV role. So um, that's my focus this year. It started off in, in January, 2020. I'm going to book my first proper British TV role. And then the pandemic happened, but you know, um, in the meantime, we've been busy um, as a producer. I'm um, producing, a, developing a feature film, um, which is great and wonderful. And I'm working with a fantastic uh, writer director called uh, Deborah Espet. Diana and I are working with her, and we're nearly finished the script. Um, but back to challenges. Yeah, it's it's getting my foot in the door at this age of 52 to get that first role. Because once you get that first role, it's, it does seem to kind of do that. People trust you then. Yeah, they, that yeah. would make things much easier. But still, mm -hmm. I'm interviewing with actors who had very good stuff before. They were a star. But even them, they have difficulty for getting the role that, they, again, they want. So it's really tough to survive in this industry. Yeah, that's why I really recommend making your own content making your own stuff i mean even even now like um it's just so easy to make to make something you know you've got an iphone you can you can make something you can make a scene for yourself that will showcase your um your acting talent which you can then send off to casting directors and stuff so yeah so it's 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 um, it is really challenging. It's so competitive. There are so many people. Like you said, there was 10 million people on IMDb. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I was surprised. Yeah. It's <laughs> a lot, a lot of people, <laughs> isn't it? So, um, yeah. And um, maybe uh, 50 thousands of them get to good movies, and uh, maybe thousands of them are superstars. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really yeah. tough. Thousands. But yeah, there's just, just a very small amount of people who are actually. Um, What's the phrase? Um, known all over the world, and um, I can't remember what the phrase is. There's a phrase for it. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's 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 fun being an actor. I love it so much. It's fun being a producer. I'm 
Um, I love working with my business partner, Diana. We actually, we actually um, met when we were 13 years old. We went to school together in Hawaii. And now, 40 years later, we're making films together. Oh, very we, nice. Yeah, so we, we uh, started our company, uh, Make Light Productions, um, 10 years ago. And we've made a f first feature. And now we're working on our second one, and third, and fourth. And my question exactly for the being a producer, what are the challenges for being a producer? Finding the money. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, financing. Because you, it, it's, I mean, of course, the, the development of the script is, is challenging as, as well. It's hugely, it's, 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 but it's fun. You know, it's a very fun part of making the script be as good as you can possibly make it. And then you, um, and then you start packaging it together to hopefully find finance and finance is definitely the most challenging thing, but you know, there's money out there. So <laughs> <laughs> there's money, there's money out there. You just need to find it. Uh, how, how, what is your strategy in order to find such fundings? Um, beg, borrow and steal. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Easiest one. <laughs> we did, um, we did do some crowdfunding. We did for, for a small part of our script, we did some crowdfunding. Yeah. That's a great idea. Um, yeah, so I don't know if you've seen Two Hours. Have you seen Two Hours? No, not unfortunately. The feature that we produced is a really lovely film. It was released in the US at the end of last year. Um, it's just released in Russia and it's, it's a family adventure. It's really fun film um, written by Roland Moore um, who wrote a really nice script and um, directed by James Newton. And um, it's a really effervescent feel good family adventure film and we did some crowdfunding for one scene and the one scene was the natural history museum so we said we told the people who gave them contributed money to us for that on the indiegogo we said you're contributing to this one scene and when you watch the film you get to see your scene um up on the screen and wow. it was it was amazing to yeah. shoot in the natural history museum it was so much fun that was so cool mm. and uh, let's do something fun we have a, okay. a challenge named crazy okay. eyebrow we mm. try to pull one eyebrow up and one down oh you're doing very good also the other one the other one is harder right <laughs> it's interesting sometimes we are good with one not the other yeah i yeah. can't do, uh... <laughs> but you did very good with the other eye. Yeah. Very <laughs> nice. <laughs> I also saw that you had a challenge for yourself for about uh, a year. What yes. was that about? I just finished it. It was called the 365 Days of Divine Joy. And it was to choose something joyful from my day, take a photograph of it and, um, and share it with the world. And it was wonderful. I have to say I'm finished now. I just finished. And when I look back over my year of all my joys and I can see the kind of the variety of, of wonderful things that have happened in my life and just some, some, sometimes they're just like small little things like a, like a flower that I see when I'm walking or sometimes they're being with my family or my friends. And it, it's kind of like when I look through it, I see, ah, I like my family, my friends, <laughs> flowers, sunsets, um, and, and my new cat. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, but it's, it's, it was really good in find, knowing that you can always find a piece of joy in your day. There's always something to be grateful for. There's always something to be thankful for. Even when times are really challenging, you can still find that, that joy. It was such a beautiful challenge. And uh, are you planning to have a new one, something like that? I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about, oh, I'm going to say it out loud. Um, I'm thinking about doing a roller skating challenge. Oh. <laughs> 365 days of roller skating. Really? I don't know. I don't know. I, I used to roller skate when I was a kid, but I don't really roller skate now. But um, my eldest, Echo, um, is, has started to roller skate. And um, I just, I, it looks like so much fun. I tried one day. It was one, one of my joys was me roller skating. And um, I really loved it. And I like to get really good at it. So I think after 365 days, I should be okay at it. Yeah, you know, when you start something and post it on Instagram, then we should stick to it. Have you thought about it? <laughs> well, that's the thing. The thing, the, the thing is, is that I'm actually, 
Uh, Deanna says she'll do it with me. Deanna's watching us right now. Deanna's my business partner and she said she'll do it with me. Yay, Deanna! <laughs> well, the thing is, is, I proved to myself that I can do 365 days of, of, of consistent posting for joy. Um, I am, I think that's one of my strengths is consistency. So I think I'll be all right. That would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. And uh, have you been ever uh, in uh, Cyprus? No. No. Never been. I'd love to come to Cyprus. Yeah, that would be lovely to see you in person here. Oh, because we are trying to have a movie festival or something like that. And if it happens, oh, yeah. that would be lovely. We are waiting for this pandemic to be over. So yes. it would be lovely to have you guys here. So you are, can I ask you a question? Sure, of course. Okay, what is Dr. 2M? Okay, my name is Mani Mehrai. So my initial are 2M. Okay. So I have PhD in mathematics, so I'm a doctor. Ah. So Dr. Twem since 2001. Yeah. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at first uh, it's very confusing for everybody what your uh, ID represents. But yeah, yeah, that's true. So you're very interested in film? Yeah, I've been interested in that since uh, I was 16 years old. Before that, obviously, I was watching movies and everything. But since that time, I started writing. And uh, I write short novels, movie scripts. But the oh. thing is that when you are a, not a Native American or British, then it's very hard to send your script to the producers and yeah. to make it happen for you. Yeah. You know, even... You yeah. No, it's true. It's, it is very challenging to send stuff to pr uh, producers. It's, a lot of producers won't take anything unless it's through an agent. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. So, so kind of what would you suggest for those guys like me that they want to be in, in Hollywood, for example, not in their local? Do they have any chance at all? Yeah, well, because there has to be there has to be um, movie makers from Cyprus who will have who have been successful. Yeah, okay. I, I have no idea because uh, yeah. the things I have done here mostly were international and not related to local people here. But what, this is what I'm trying to do now, to connect international people with Cypriots. Ah, okay. So these interviews that. are based on that, so that uh, I can bring uh, artists from our, around the world to Cyprus. Yeah. Because if I just leave it to Cypriots, Cypriots, they love to just be on the beach side and do nothing. <laughs> 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 they are very satisfied with what they have as their uh, uh, I don't know, arts or movie industry, but that's yeah. not enough though, because as a foreigner, I noticed this thing. So, so you want to expand yeah. the, expand the, um, the industry within, within Cyprus. Yeah, because I see the potential. This is not my job, but as a hobby, at least, I want to do my part to make it mm. happen. Mm. I, uh, I'm in debt to Cyprus because they were my host for 11 years. And I want to do something in return, just a small yeah. thing, but I will do my part. Yeah, and I think it's actually quite, it's not that small of a thing. I think it's actually quite a big thing. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a gift that you're giving them. That's good. Well, maybe you and I can chat after the, after the interview and... Uh, sure, that would be lovely. Yeah, yeah. Sure, of course, we will be in touch. And yeah. Andromeda, thanks a lot for giving us your time today. Thank you so much for having me. My first Instagram live. You made it very easy. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad your first was with me. Uh, I'm yeah, honored. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you very much for your time. And thank I you. wish you luck in your uh, uh, artistic life and also thank in you. your life. Thank you very much. I wish much. you the best. Thank you so much. And I wish you the best too. Thank Thanks you very much. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.